Hey everyone, Talking Dave over here. The dorky talking black guy who's just trying to get by. And welcome to another edition of Kaiju. For the rest of the month of June, I will predominantly be talking about traditional kaiju movies. What's a traditional kaiju movie? Click the link down below to my intro to kaiju, which I give an in-depth description of what I consider a traditional kaiju movie. Before I begin, I need to clear something up. Last kaiju, I review, I talked about Gamera vs. Barugan, and I gave that my, rever my worst review. But I was looking at my review last year for Varan the Unbelievable, and wow, I gave that movie a higher rating than Gamera vs. Barugan. Now, I will say this, Varan the Unbelievable had much better special effects and that's saying a lot because it was in black and white where Gamera vs. Barugan was in color. However, other than that, Gamera vs. Barugan was a much better movie in every way. So, I apologize for that bad ranking for Gamera vs. Barugan, especially compared to Varan the Unbelievable. With that out of the way, let's talk about the Goddess of Good and the Guardian of Earth who fights to protect the ones she loves. At least that's the tagline of the movie, where I'm talking about the rebirth of Mothra. Millions of years ago, an alien creature known as Deskidora, or Defkidora, or Defkidra, crash landed on Earth, and the Ellis, a group of inch-high fairies, commanded an army of Mothras to push Deskidora back and seal him away, ensuring he does not get released. However, a construction company happens upon the seal and removes it, causing one of the rogue Ellis to steal the seal and release Deskidora. The Earth's and Ellis's only hope to stop him is Mothra, whom is dying after just laying an egg. After Godzilla vs. Destroyer, Toho decided to end the Godzilla series and wanted to give it a break for at least 10 years. But kaiju movies were still prop profitable and they were still in high demand. And there was an idea to have a solo Mothra movie, you know, a rebooted one, after sometime in the earlier 90s. However, with the bomb of Godzilla vs. Biollante, they didn't go through with it. But after Godzilla vs. Destroyer, they decided to continue with not only one standalone movie, but a whole trilogy of an updated Mothra. And if you know me, and if you've watched this video, these, well, if you've watched my channel, you know that I don't have the strong feelings for Mothra that a lot of people do. But I give credit where credit is due. Her first outing was awesome. Mothra vs. Godzilla, Showa era, is one of the best movies in the whole franchise, and it's in my top five Godzilla movies. And despite not really liking Godzilla vs. Mothra that much in the Heisei era, I will say that Batra was awesome, and it's always nice to see Mothra get an update. So, I first watched this movie last month, and really didn't like it and gave it a bad review that I could not record due to technical difficulties. So I rewatched it again and I realized actually there's more charm and there's movies a little more entertaining. So I had to rewatch it again and I liked it even more. So I had to rewatch it again and I, I gotta admit this movie is. This movie's not as bad as the initial watching but it does have a lot of problems for example another change in the Mothra mythologies particularly when it comes to the fairies well not fairy in this movie because fairy is a miniature Mothra that the Ellis's fly but I'm talking about the Ellis's so we get a reboot of the Shobijin because they were the Shobijin in the originals then in the Heisei Godzilla movies, they were the Cosmos, and now they're called the Ellis. One thing that I must admit, though, this change is actually good because 
they're not twins. As in the last Mothra movie where the Cosmos were supposed to be twins, they didn't look anything alike. At least in this movie, they made all of the LS's sisters. Yes, the two good ones, Mona and Lori, are the good ones. But the bad one, Belvuda, she is actually one of their sisters as well too, who's gone rogue and is the main antagonist of this movie, other than Descador herself himself. So, by the way, so there's three Ellis's in this movie, and only one of them knows how to act. Belvuda tries to do an over-the-top Wicked Witch of the West, while Lori, I understand she's supposed to be emotional, but goddamn, tone down the overacting and tone down the facial expressions, lady. Seriously. So, we got that out of the way. This movie is very kid-friendly and is aimed toward kids, which is, I heard, is a theme of the Rebirth of Mothra series. Which can be aggravating because these kids are annoying as hell. But by the same token, at least they acted like kids. Something that, you know, while it can be annoying, Nowadays, where all the kids are supposed to act like adults and everything, blah blah blah, with the exception of the Stranger Kid, Stranger Things kids, at least these kids act like kids. They act like a squabbling, you know, brother and sister. Okay, that was fine. Other than that, though, all the other characters are just forgettable and annoying, especially the news reporter. So yeah, a lot of annoying people and aggravating people in this movie. And I, 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 I gotta say. I understand kid friendly and everything. Why do you always have to play the trope with the couple arguing with the mother complaining about the father being overworked or working all the time? You know what, lady? You own a big house and a nice house. You think you would get that where your husband was not an overachiever and on top of it off, at least a person is responsible and have power? The hell? And I hate to sound very prejudiced, but most Asian ladies do kind of look at wealth and like you know how you are with finances so why were you bitching lady seriously anywho I got that out of the way the special effects okay the United States could not really do CGI that well on its own like Jurassic Park was amazing and a lot of the CGI in the 90s were very hit and miss it took until the early 2000s to somewhat get a handle on it. Japan, yeah, they did a bad job with CGI majority of the times. And they're still hit and miss, but they've gotten better at it, but they're still hit and miss. So the CGI that you see in this movie really stands out and is really bad. By the same token, the practical effects are freaking amazing, as well as the suits of the kaijus. Death Ghidorah, or Death Ghidorah, or Death Ghidra looks awesome. Mothra looked like Mothra from the Heisei movies, right? But this new Mothra, Neo Mothra, whoa! Neo Mothra looked badass, I gotta say. That was awesome. And they gave the Mothras some awesome and new updated abilities. Thank you, God, because now I can see why at least, actually, I would rather see Neo Mothra go against Godzilla. I can see why Godzilla is like, you know, Mothra is able to beat Godzilla now because of Neo Mothra. Because she is awesome, unlike the pansy Mothra that's always dying in the movie. And yes, Mothra dies again. And wait, is that called Neo Mothra? It's Leo Mothra? And Leo Mothra is a male? You mean to tell me you make a new Mothra, you make it awesome, and you took away one of the most unique things about Mothra, making her a female. A female that's able to stop Godzilla. Oh boy. Well, at least the music is really good, which I can't take away. The music is awesome. Though, sometimes the singing and some of the camera angles yeah, it just comes out of nowhere. I'm like, 
huh? So as you can tell, as even though I do enjoy this movie, as a lot of things they do right, they do bad. They have decent practical effects, but horrible CGI. You have a decent spin on the mythology, but then you're rebooting way too much. You have annoying kids, but they actually act like kids. You have bad stereotypes. You have great music that comes out of nowhere. You have good cinematography. So the movie's all over the place. So I gotta say that Moth, the rebirth of Mothra, it's a high, you know. It's a high all right. It's It borders between I and cool, you know. If you're a kaiju fan, highly recommend watching this. If you're on the fence about kaiju movies, give it a pass. Agree? Disagree? Please, drop me a comment below. Give me a like. Follow me on Facebook at Token Dave or on Twitter at Token Dave 80. Subscribe and ring that bell so you know when a new video loads. But until then, it's been Token Dave, Dorky Token Black Guy who's just trying to get by. Catch all of y'all later.